6.44. The Radio Whammo Breakfast. Talking politics with Phil Goff. Leader of the Labour Party it is, uh, Phil Goff, joining us this morning. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Whammo. And where are you today? I'm uh, in Auckland, uh, heading down to Wellington and then back to Auckland again tonight for a meeting tonight. So, uh, and then back down to Wellington in the morning again. Crikey. Who knows where you are? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I certainly wouldn't. Um, you were, of course, recently in Christchurch for the memorial service. Um, what's with the red tie, Phil? Come on, politics. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Uh, foot and mouth time again for Melissa Lee. Uh, I just can't believe that woman. Um, you know, bad enough talking about motorways bringing criminals into Mount Albert, but to suggest that I was wearing a red tie because I was making this a partic- partisan occasion. Mm. Uh, you know, when red tie, black suit with the Canterbury colours, and a, and a number of she looked closely, a number of her ministerial colleagues were dressed in the same way. Uh, it was it was silly. It was <laughs> it was worse than silly. It was pathetic. Um, hey, look, that was a, a serious day. A, a day. Uh, to share with the families uh, who had lost uh, loved ones in the earthquake, and there was no politics in it. Uh, I've got to say, it was, it, you know, it was really heartbreaking. Actually, I, after the ceremony, I just went down and, and met with the families and talked with the families. And uh, three people that I met had all lost their wives uh, in the uh, CTV building, mm. uh, but there was one man there in tears, and uh, you know, I was uh, giving him a bit of a hug and saying, you know. Uh, I hope things, uh, you know, will work out uh, as as well as they can for you. And he said, "Look, I've got two two children, uh, nine months and twenty months." He said, "And tomorrow was my wedding anniversary," and uh, you know, uh, you you just feel wor- words aren't enough yeah. in a situation like that. So um, I, I think talking to the families, and they they were the important people at the ceremony. Uh, they 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 were pleased that that people had taken the time to. Uh, express their their concern and condolences. Uh, they uh, were buoyed by the amount of community support that they'd received and the services that had been provided. Mm. You know, um, by the different you know agencies, whether it was the Sallies or the Red Cross. Uh, and it was you know it was really good to see Christchurch and New Zealand together uh, of one mind mm. a- about support for the Cantabrians. Mm. Meanwhile, of course, the, uh, the the rest of the world revolves and goes on, and uh, another conflict has erupted. Uh, this time, North Africa and Libya. The UN has um, has gone in there, uh, well, not gone in there, but is uh, is now attacking Gaddafi's uh, forces from the air uh, with uh, full support from New Zealand as well. Yeah, well, the decision was taken uh, within the United Nations, so it's United Nations sanctioned, and that's what Labor believes is appropriate in a situation like this. I mean, the views weren't unanimous. Uh, some of the countries, like China and Russia, uh, abstained, but uh, interestingly, they didn't vote against the resolution. And I think what it comes down to, the bottom line, is, um, you know, we, we went through Bosnia, we went through Rwanda um, back, you know, in the last couple of decades, where the world stood by and did nothing while civilian populations were massacred. And I think there is a genuine and real concern that Gaddafi may have done that to his opponents and to the civilian population uh, in the east of Libya. And and that essentially is the justification for the action, for the no-fly zone, and for the attack on uh, uh, the Libyan Air Force and the, uh, uh, the attacking troops. And I think that can be justified. The, the real question is, uh, what happens next? Mm. Uh, you've got a civil war in Libya. Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you resolve that uh, from the outside? Uh, you, you know, first things first, I suppose, stop the massacre. Uh, but secondly, uh, you need to have a long-term solution in Libya, and I don't think anybody's got any ideas as to how that might happen. No, and how do you stop it spilling over and becoming a regional war? Well, that's the thing. I mean, and, and at what point do you intervene in any particular situation? Uh, in Bahrain, uh, likewise, there have been uh, people uh, shot and killed in the streets uh, in a show of excessive uh, force by, by the regime uh, in that country. Not the sort of massacre that maybe somebody that is um, uh, of the personality and character of uh, Gaddafi, mm. but still something serious enough. And uh, the other side of that, I guess, Whammo, is that we've learnt from uh, long experience, Iraq uh, most recently, 
very easy to go in and say we can sort this out from yeah. the outside, yeah. uh, but actually much harder to do that in practice. Because let's be fair, at the, at the end of the day, though, this once again comes down to oil, right? And make and making sure that the oil is still reaching the pumps for us in our western countries. I think a cynic would say that, and there's plenty of evidence uh, to support cynicism in this regard. Uh, you know, is the difference between Mugabe in Zimbabwe and Gaddafi in Libya uh, that one country has oil and the other doesn't? One is, uh, you know, uh, strategically important because of its resources mm. and, and not the other. Um, but, uh, you I know, mean, and, and the Americans, <laughs> the Americans are, are um, fighting uh, pilots and aircraft that they train themselves through the Saudis. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, you, you, you'd have to say, uh, where did the weaponry that Gaddafi is using come from? Uh, and uh, uh, I suspect it's uh, from a, a mixture of the countries uh, that are now uh, shooting down his yeah. planes. And there's no there's no morality in the arms trade internationally. No. Even th- amongst some of the best countries in the world, like Sweden, uh, you know they'll sell wherever they've got a willing buyer. And uh, you just wonder uh, why it's such a great idea uh, for the world to expend as much money as it does on armaments and to supply regimes that are doubtful regimes uh, with the latest in technology. Mm. Phil Goff, thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Wemo. Cheers. Catch you again. See Bye. Labour leader Phil Goff there with us this morning. It's now seven.